methane, and liquid oxygen, once just the promise of cleaner burns and deeper emissions, are now becoming the backbone of Starship's future. This powerful duo, long praised for its performance and potential, is finally getting a home of its own. For the first time, SpaceX is moving to build a dedicated facility to produce this fuel. It's a pivotal step not just for efficiency, but for independence. By mastering its own supply chain, SpaceX inches closer to a future where Starship can operate at scale, unhindered, and self-sustained. So how far along is this bold new effort, and what doors could it open for missions beyond Earth? Let's take a closer look right now on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Once again, we must affirm that the use of liquid methane and liquid oxygen fuel represents a revolutionary step forward that SpaceX has pioneered. This choice of propellants was made for several compelling reasons. First, these fuels are widely available and easier to produce and refine compared to many traditional rocket fuels. Second, they are relatively inexpensive, making them an economical choice for high-frequency launch operations. Third, they produce fewer pollutants, which makes them a more environmentally friendly option. Most importantly, methane and liquid oxygen are highly compatible with future Mars missions, as the resources found on Mars could potentially be used to produce these fuels. This would allow Starship to refuel on the Martian surface and return to Earth, supporting the goal of long-term interplanetary travel and self-sufficiency. Looking at the current situation, we can see that Starship's fueling infrastructure continues to grow. The largest system in operation today is the tank farm located near Pad A at the Starbase facility. This farm is capable of storing thousands of tons of propellant and is constantly prepared to support engine tests and launch operations. However, SpaceX does not yet produce its fuel on site. Instead, fuel is delivered to Starbase daily via tanker trucks from a production plant located as far as 30 kilometers or around 19 miles away. This arrangement presents multiple challenges. The costs associated with fuel transportation are significant, and moving large quantities of volatile fuel across long distances increases the complexity of logistics. There are also limitations in terms of how much fuel can be stored and moved at any given time. Additionally, the daily fuel shipments contribute to heavy traffic along Highway 4, the main access route to Starbase. Given these challenges, it is clear that SpaceX will benefit greatly from developing a fuel production facility directly at Starbase. This intention was recently confirmed in a newly filed proposal. Specifically, this proposal involves an application for a permit to build an Air Separation Unit, or ASU, in Cameron County, Texas. The project description explains that the new facility will support SpaceX's launch operations by providing one of the core propellants used in Starship flights. It also mentions that the new plants will help reduce traffic on Highway 4, which will benefit both SpaceX and the surrounding community. As for the proposed location, the new facility will not be situated directly on the launch site itself. Instead, it will be constructed on the opposite side of Highway 4 to the northeast of the launch site and closer to the coast. According to the site maps included in the proposal, the designated area is currently undeveloped. It consists mostly of sand, rocks, and vegetation, and the terrain is uneven in places. In terms of progress, the timeline for approval is not yet confirmed. However, assuming permits are granted, it'll likely take SpaceX between 8 to 12 months to complete the project. This estimate includes the time needed to clear and grade the site, which is essential for preparing a stable construction foundation. Because the proposed location is near the coastline, the soil is likely to be soft and porous. This will require soil surcharging and compaction work, similar to the preparation done at Starbase's production and launch areas in the past. Once the foundation is ready, full-scale construction can begin. The fuel production systems may be developed as separate installations for methane and oxygen, or they may be integrated into a single operational complex. If constructed as independent systems, the methane and oxygen production processes will follow distinct paths. Methane will be sourced from underground natural gas reservoirs. Extraction will be done using drilling rigs, and the raw methane will be piped to a processing station. 
At that point, the gas will be filtered to remove impurities such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor. Once purified, the methane will be cooled to negative 162 degrees Celsius and liquefied. The final product, which is liquid methane, will be stored in insulated tanks and either trucked to the launch pads or piped directly to the tank farm due to the short distance. Liquid oxygen, on the other hand, will be derived from the atmosphere using large-scale air separation systems. The process begins by compressing air to around 100 psi and cooling it to negative 183 degrees Celsius to achieve a liquid state. The liquid air is then processed through multiple filtration steps to remove contaminants and gases that could freeze or solidify at extreme temperatures. Following this, nitrogen and argon are separated from the oxygen using a temperature-controlled distillation process, leaving behind highly purified liquid oxygen. This propellant will also be stored in tanks and transported by truck or pipeline to the necessary facilities. Altogether, this new fuel plant marks a major step forward in SpaceX's journey to make Starship operations more efficient and self-reliant. With on-site propellant production, the company can reduce costs, streamline logistics, improve safety, and better support high launch frequencies in the future. Moreover, it brings SpaceX one step closer to the ultimate goal of building a sustainable, Mars-capable space transportation system. As for a combined production system, SpaceX may implement the Sabatier reaction, a process that is also planned for future use on Mars. This reaction involves combining water and carbon dioxide to produce methane and oxygen. Once generated, these products are filtered and cooled into their pure liquid forms, ready for storage and transport. While it is not yet confirmed which specific systems and methods SpaceX will use at this fuel production facility, it is clear that the establishment of an on-site plant will significantly improve logistical efficiency by eliminating long-distance fuel transport. Beyond the core production system, SpaceX will also need to expand its auxiliary infrastructure. A key component will be the installation of systems designed to collect, condense, and reliquify methane gas. This capability allows methane that escapes or is vented during operations to be recovered, cooled back into a usable liquid form, and reused. This process minimizes fuel waste, improves efficiency, and reduces environmental impact. Although such a system is already in place at the launch site, it will likely need to be expanded or duplicated at the new facility to optimize fuel production and management. In general, building a gas separation and liquefaction plant near Starbase will address multiple challenges. It will greatly reduce the time and cost associated with transporting fuel, eliminate many of the complications tied to fuel storage and preservation during transit, and ensure a more consistent and reliable supply of propellant. This proximity will give SpaceX greater autonomy and control over its fueling process, a critical advantage as launch cadence continues to increase. More importantly, the experience gained from building and operating such a plant will serve as a foundational step toward establishing a similar system on Mars in the future. Of course, several challenges remain. Starbase is located close to the coastline, meaning the plant must be built with strong environmental protection to withstand harsh weather conditions, including high humidity, salt exposure, and potential storms. Additionally, the facility may attract attention from environmental regulatory agencies due to its industrial nature and location near sensitive ecosystems. SpaceX will need to thoroughly address these concerns to ensure smooth long-term operation of the site. Looking ahead, the development of this plant could mark the beginning of broader infrastructure expansion. As SpaceX transforms Starbase into a full-scale spaceport city, both launch and production systems will grow in parallel. The fuel production facility is expected to scale accordingly to meet increasing demands. Expansion will not be limited to Texas either. In Florida, where SpaceX is actively developing additional launch infrastructure and preparing for a high launch rate, similar fueling systems may eventually be constructed. Florida provides certain advantages, including existing infrastructure, strong support from NASA, and a regulatory environment that may pose fewer obstacles. Once launch operations stabilize there, it is likely that SpaceX will consider building a complementary fuel production site. So, do you look forward to seeing SpaceX achieve self-sufficiency and Starship fuel production? Let us know by responding yes or no in the comment section down below. Then, like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest developments in SpaceX's journey. Of course, fuel is only one piece of the larger puzzle. To unlock Starship's full potential, SpaceX must refine and expand several critical systems beyond propulsion.
Production remains one of the most urgent priorities. The Star Factory, under construction for years, has already helped improve Starship manufacturing, but it has yet to reach the pace SpaceX ultimately needs. To meet future mission demands, internal production lines must be completed by year's end. Only then can the company reliably produce multiple Starships each month, supporting the rapid test schedule and operational cadence envisioned. Stacking infrastructure is evolving alongside it. Older bays like the Mid Bay and Low Bay have been phased out in favor of more capable structures. The High Bay, once essential, is now being dismantled to make room for a second Giga Bay, designed to handle multiple vehicles at once and streamline inspection, stacking, and refurbishment. The move signals a shift toward more industrial scale production built to match the ambitions of Starship. Florida is following a similar path. At Roberts Road, expansion plans are underway to build a new gigabay, mirroring the scale of development at Starbase. These upgrades aim to establish a network of Starship manufacturing hubs, making the program more resilient and globally distributed. Beyond production, testing systems must also evolve. The recent incident with S-36 has highlighted the importance of robust test infrastructure. The Massey test site, in particular, will require a significant overhaul. Key elements like the test stand, ship quick disconnect arm, and fuel tanks may need replacement or upgrades. Current capacity, limited to one ship and one booster at a time, will not support the level of throughput needed for rapid flight cadence. Expansion here is essential. Launch systems are also seeing major progress. Pad B, or Pad 2 is nearing completion and could be operational before the year ends. Designed with V3 Starships in mind, this pad will be crucial for the next phase of testing and launches. Pad A, meanwhile, remains active, supporting both static fires and early flights. It may receive upgrades in the future, but continues to play a vital short-term role. Looking further ahead, Starbase itself will likely expand to support even more launch pads. Florida's launch capabilities are set to grow as well. While LC-39A is limited by Falcon 9 infrastructure, SLC-37 offers room to build up to three Starship pads. SpaceX may also pursue additional launch sites as demand grows and global operations ramp up. This period marks a turning point in Starship's evolution. Fuel, production, testing, and launch must all progress in concert. The upcoming methane facility at Starbase is a strong step towards self-sufficiency. But its true value depends on how well the surrounding infrastructure can support it. With challenges ahead and many systems still in flux, the path is not yet easy. But if SpaceX succeeds, the result will be a launch program capable of transforming space travel at every level. So let us continue to watch as this vision becomes reality, one launch, one ship, one breakthrough at a time. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.